Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Um, for you that don't know me, I'm Gary Jimison. Um, for all my sins, I ended up as the general manager here. Um, and I'm here ready to take some questions from you guys. And I've got with me today my wife, Catherine. Say hello. <laughs> So just so everybody understands, because she's my wife, we don't have to worry too much about social distancing. Well, we don't at home, so we don't have to worry about it too much here. So I'm not miss I'm not oh on no. Instagram feed, but hello, I am here too. I've got such a big device there. So, um, well, we'll crack straight on. We've actually already got some um, questions in already. So if you don't mind me, I'm just going to open this up. Ah, so people Chester Jeffries has joined in. Chester oh. Jeffries makes some cool gloves. Um, some cool leather gloves, got some more fair isle on them, so check them out if you haven't already. Yeah, that's a, that's a true. Right, okay. Um, There's a few here. We're going to use some paper. We've got them some written down. I'm trying to write them down as you ask them. So, um, yeah, we'll try our best anyway. On you go, Gary, then. So, what okay, do you want to start? So, that's quite a nice one to start with. So. Okay, so. Is it possible to produce a movable set of yarn pegs or cards so you can try different feral combinations without cutting up your shade card? Now, this has been asked before. We've spoken about this before. Yeah, we have indeed. Um, the company that produces our, our shade cards, um, Weatherby Shade Cards, they have a, a certain platform and a certain way that they do things. Um, and obviously we were buying those off the peg, um, as it were. But obviously with our own colours made into them. So. One of the cool things we have seen people doing is where they've actually, God forbid, cut up their own card and made them on a big ring that they can swap and change and, and pull them out. Um, so they don't want to cut them up, so... Yeah. See, there you go. I, 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 I buy a second shade card. That's the only uh, <laughs> you suggestion don't know that I can have. You don't know whether the shade cards can make ones uh, that no, are movable? No, not, not that I, I know of. Um, <laughs> That's great. We've got That's a phone ringing on top of us, which is always handy. Okay, so we'll move along. Um, someone's asked about tips for selecting colours for a large Fair Isle project. Um, we have... Personally, it's not something I really do, to be perfectly honest. But there are loads of Shetland tutors, um, some of which, if you guys follow um, any of the Shetland Woolwick stuff, will already know. Names that spring to mind, the likes of Wilma. Our patron this year, uh, she could, uh, she's forgotten more about putting together colours for Feral than I'll ever probably know. Yeah, and Terry's actually got a class um, at the end of this month. Terry's got a class for um, swatching, which is, I think, what you're looking for. I think we seem to be losing Wi-Fi on Instagram. But, yeah, Ter look up Terry. She's got some classes for helping you put together um, yeah. colours for large Feral projects. Do you want to see if you can fix I don't know. Instagram. Instagram, are you still there? It's came up with Instagram issues. Um, lost the Wi-Fi. Can anybody tell me? No, I don't want to end it. Okay, bit of a problem uh, here with Instagram. Anyway, here's uh, some more you're, questions. Keep you're on the wrong Wi-Fi. That's what's wrong. Well, keep you answering questions. Okay, I'll so this. I'll carry on. Um, what kind of dyes are we using? Are natural dyes an issue, or is it not possible due to the amount? You are not on there, okay. Never mind, I'll go and sort it. Okay, so um, could we think about a uh, special range with natural dyes? Okay, um, we do use all chemical dyes. Um, we don't have any um, real, uh, I suppose the, the um, way to put it would be, we don't have any access to natural dyes, as in I've never researched it um, at the moment. We've been using the same dye now for 35 uh, plus years um, and they are all chemical dyes unfortunately um, obviously we use chemical dyes just to keep the colors running as close as we possibly can um, obviously we don't want things to, to fluctuate on the shade card for you guys um, so it's uh, it's a kind of a um, rock and a hard place you, you, you we started to move around dye stuffs so we would end up with our shade card would have to change probably quite dramatically, I should imagine. Okay, looks like we might be getting Instagram back. Um, a special dye range, um, yeah, that is something that we could definitely look at. Obviously our natural colours that we make, are uh, we only put a minimal amount of dyed wool into those. 
and that allows us to have this nice um, flecked yarn that comes straight from the collar of the animals um, that we have here. So, and I would like to um, investigate the, the thought of natural dyes even for that range so we could say it was a completely natural product but at this time unfortunately we're sticking with our chemicals. Terrible. <laughs> Horrible to admit. Okay, so what else do we have here? There's people coming thing. So, any other questions? I think have we answered all the ones that's like no, here? No, I think there's more. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm not sure who this came from. How do we stop the different colours blending with each other? <clears throat> do the machine have to clean down of every fibre before moving on to the next? That's from a Helena? Paula? Um, so, yeah, the one of the biggest issues we have in the factory here is keeping things clean. Obviously, collar contamination can be a real issue. Um, so we try our very best to, to keep everything as clean as we possibly can. Um, one of the great things about doing these melange sort of heathered shades that we do is that gives you a great way of jumping between colors and not getting caught out. So we have, for example, a red with a small amount of blue in it. And then we'll go, we can very quickly go to a blue with a small amount of red in it that allows us to jump. Um, for example, we can get to slate from red because it's a dark gray color, but there's a small amount of red hiding in there. And then we'll go to granite or whatever. But obviously, car machines have to be kept clean um, and they perform better when they're clean as well. So every four or five weeks, we have to shut that machine down and we take a small comb about maybe six inches long, something like that and we have to scrape those rollers completely clean um, back down to the bare, bare cloth and then we can start again. And obviously if we were doing anything like white, um, we would always have a good clean down before we do that. And the same goes for like the blending plant, we would make sure that was all spruced up and give a bit of a clean up before we before we'd make a big jump like that. I'm getting lots and lots of waves on Instagram, which is Yeah, lovely. so I want to <laughs> jump back a minute. So I mentioned that um, Terry does a swatch class in October. So somebody's asking, who's Terry? Terry Laura, Terry Malcolmson, Terry, what's her new surname? She's just got Leesk. married. She's just Terry got married. She's Terry Leesk. Malcolmson um, is Wilma Malcolmson's granddaughter, and she has some classes online. So yes, they are online. So if you look up Terry Laura on Instagram and Facebook, you'll find um, more information about these classes. I've actually just signed up for one for myself, too. So it's all about learning. And somebody else here is asking about you sources for yarn in the United States. Do you want to answer that? <laughs> yeah, so if you go onto our website, uh, we have a distribution agreement that's been gone over a million times on, um, on social media, but we are locked into a, a distribution agreement with a company called Simply Shetland. Um, they're based in Seattle, and they look after all the distribution of our yarns over in the States. But if you go onto our own website, you will find a pretty good list of stockists over there. Some have online, some do mail order, but uh, we try to keep it up to date as best we can. Yeah, there's a couple that jump to mind. There's Heritage Spinning and Weaving, Schoolyard yes. Press. Um, and then up in Canada as well, there's um, uh, Camilla Valley Farms, Camilla Valley Farms. Canada. They, there's certainly a few in the US, but yeah, our stockist list on our website is up to date. Yeah, we keep it up to date. Um, in fact, I added some... Reason. Yeah, we had, I added two or three um, US stockists just the other day. So. Yeah, keep an eye on that because it does uh, it does get updated regularly. Okay, there's something else here. Hello from Melbourne, Australia. Wow, are you the furthest away that's watching us? I wonder. Let's see, where else is everybody? What time at? is it in Melbourne right now? <laughs> <laughs> it must be nearly midnight. In fact, it has to be midnight, is it? I don't know. That's well. sure maybe yeah. That's Diane Gordon. Um, so there's a Molly sent in a question that was quite a long question. But she said that in her um, experience of doing stranded color work, um, we have, she's noticed over the years that she almost feels a difference in the thickness between so. some of the colors. Um, maybe not just particularly in our yarn, but certainly in anybody, else, um, anybody else's yarn. And it probably, I've thought a little bit on this, and I, I think it can only come down to the fact of the dye process. So if you take a color like 104 white, for example, in our shade card, which has no dye in it, okay. there's no, um, there's nothing added to it at all. It's just a straight wool, straight from the sheep's back, give it a wash, and it's straight into the card machine. That's had no 
chemical process and added to it at all. So you're getting the the complete luster, I suppose, or the halo of the yarn is going to stay with that and that hairiness, I suppose, that's that's known for the ship and wool. Whereas if you take a colour like 999 Black, for example, that's been dyed, over dyed, um, about as punishing as it really can get, um, that is going to affect that fibre. Now obviously we dye, we keep that wool dyeing for a short period of time as possible, um, but obviously it's going to change it. Um, so then when you come onto the carding side of things and the spinning, all of the yarn is um, made for its um, it's made for its its thickness is taken by weight. So there's there could be a, a variation in there, and obviously it's done on um, on uh, an average as well. So there's a there's definitely variation going to be in there. So whilst the yarn is probably the same thickness and the same weight, it will just feel different. And that's down to the quantity of chemical processing that the dye does. And unfortunately, I would think that would have the same effect even if it was a chemical dye or a natural dye. You'd still have to boil that wool to get that dye to stick. So I don't think it would. I don't think the natural dye would just have an awfully big effect. So what else have we got here? Well, somebody's desperate to mix some of Wilma's patterns and wondering when we might have Madder and Foxglove back in stock. <laughs> <laughs> so Madder's been really popular since Wilma and Terry did the live chat the other day. Yeah, it completely wiped out our store in about three minutes flat. Um, so it, they're both, um, I think one of them's at Conan, um, so it'll be sort of a week or so you'll start to see that back online. Um, Foxglove, I'm not so sure. That one's been out of stock for a wee while, so... Uh, but then as you're explaining about how we dye stuff and make stuff, it's not just a case of we'll need Fox stuff, let's dye it tomorrow. It kind of has to happen in an order, doesn't it? Guy? Yeah, we do. We have to run through our colour sequence, as it were, so that we don't get that contamination. There's no way I could put mad in after black, for example, because you would just have a very interesting shade for the first half of the batch, and then it would get nice and clean afterwards. Um, yeah, have we got anything else? Yeah, we've got somebody <coughs> asking here, loving the colours we produce on Instagram, how often do you introduce new colours? Mm. <laughs> not often enough perhaps I tell you what happens to our colours range is our colour range doesn't move very quickly now some people really like that for example our sort of commercial knitters and that's one of the reasons why our shade card has got to the stage it has because of our commercial knitting um, and obviously if I have someone coming along and wanting to purchase the same garment that they bought three years ago I want to be able to have that yarn in stock to make it. Or indeed, if the fashion takes a swing from the last 20 years ago and they come carrying something we produced then, we would be able to um, produce it as well. So there are shades on our shade card that have been there for 30 plus years, and I don't really have any intentions of changing them. So we just keep adding things. And uh, it gets to the stage where our factory would need elastic sides just to hold the store. Um, so uh, we're not in any great rush to change anything, um, but uh, you never know. One of the things I would like to try and do is to take some of the not so popular colours and the, the boring colours as I like to call them, the ones that are just a flat dye that's the same as what a lot of other producers would make and turn them into a heathered shade, make them more interesting. Well, that's the ones that I like anyway. Somebody here on Instagram, Bex Shetland, is asking, is it possible to come see the factory when it's safe to do so? We'd love to see the process. So at the minute, we're still... Well, mm. did you see the video that we've posted? There's a video available for this week only. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so we do have that video up this week. Um, and that does play, if anybody's visited our stores in the islands, we have that playing. Um, we used to let people come and visit the factory and have a look around, but unfortunately health and safety laws and insurances etc means that unless you're a trained personnel, I can't have you in here unless you're part of an organised tour. So... Speak to Wool Adventures, Misa Hay with Wool Adventures, she yes. does organised tours. Or yeah, I was going to yeah. say, um, try Wool Adventures, um, Misa Hay, she's the, she organises tours and um, she has her own guide that's um, that's ensured to come around here. And also Andy, um, up in Yell, he does tours as well. Um, 
I won't check out the video yet. Yeah. It's on Facebook and Instagram, <laughs> and links is in my bio, or I've posted links on Facebook, so go for it. And spread the word around Shetland, too. <laughs> Share the video around. And I see Misa oh. just commented underneath you. Yeah. So, there you go. So, also, Gary, we have got a couple of new questions here. Somebody's wondering about any advice on washing items knitted with Spindrift. Somebody has had a kit expanded after washing. Hmm. Mm. That's an interesting one. Um... I wonder about, uh, I hate to say, maybe a tension issue? I don't know. Um, obviously, the yarn that you have um, on the ball has already been washed. Um, so we would obviously, it's a hand wash in lukewarm water, a hand warm um, and dry flat. But expansion is not something I, know, it's I get. Shrinkage. Yeah, it's usually shrinkage that we find people having problems with. Um, Oh, I thought I'd been careful it expanded. I'm not sure. The other option, of course, is if it's gone too big, is you could just wash it in some warmer than normal water, um, and that will have the opposite effect of being careful. <laughs> so, but yeah, there may be more folk that can maybe help better with that. Um, yeah, Gary doesn't knit, and I am just beginning. No. Neither of us are particularly great on actually hand knitting, so no. we maybe should have had somebody a bit more qualified for that kind of questions with us today too. Um, so somebody is saying, what's well, Joan from Heritage Spinning and Weaving in the US? Hi, Joan. So she's one of our um, shops and yep. websites in the US you can order all the yarn through. She's asking, my customers ask, are the balls made to be pulled from the center or the outside? This is a good debate. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny one, this one. Uh, I would recommend pulling from the center. Um, unless you use a yarn ball, and then you can pull it very nicely from the outside. Um, and uh, there's a uh, Cecil makes fantastic yarn balls here in Shetland, so you have can always work have a work. But the donuts that our um, Marl and Heather yarn has done up in, we'd recommend those from the outside. Well, they won't they won't pull from the inside. Um, no. But yeah, the beauty of the pulling from the inside sometimes it'd be a bit tricky to get that first bit out. But don't worry about that because you'll soon you'll soon knit that up. Um, and don't worry about packing I think it's back. a bit of personal preference as well, really. There's yeah. not a right or a wrong, I don't think. It's just no. whatever you prefer doing. If I'm winding one back here in the factory, I go from the centre. So maybe that's the way to put it. But I never put it on wires, so I, I wouldn't on knitting needles. <laughs> so um, somebody's asking when the spin drift shade card will be back in stock. Um, uh, there are more on the way. Yeah, there are completely more. out of stock of what we have just now. I think we are. Um, we, As you can imagine, with that number of colours on that card, um, it can make a real hard uh, job getting a cone of every single colour to get away to the company to get new ones made. But we do try our best. And we did try to be really organised. We had it ready to go in January mm -hmm. and then COVID hat. So it's, yeah, that didn't We help. were trying to supersede the sellout, but yeah, um, so we, hopefully not too long is the answer. We were ahead of COVID, but unfortunately the supplier, um, they got caught in the middle of it. And not just making our shake cards, I'm sure they were making other people's ones as well. So we try not to put too much pressure on them. Um, somebody here is saying we've got great sweaters. So we have launched in lockdown a new website for our knitwear. Do you want to speak about that? Okay, so for the last, oh, 100 years we've been selling knitwear. Um, but as many of you will know, it's changed a lot. Um, and one of our main markets for the last 35 odd years has been Japan, um, who have been fantastic. Um, I couldn't ask to work in a better market, really. Um, but since I came into the business um, like 15 years ago or so, then our markets have really kind of uh, evened out a wee bit. We don't do much into the US when it comes to sweaters. We've got a few specialist stores that look at our stuff. Um, but uh, we've done a lot more into Europe lately, which is fantastic. Um, but we've always been kind of uh, trying to get to the stage where we could make enough knitwear that we could actually supply it ourselves as well. Um, and unfortunately, we sell out every year, basically our whole production is, disappears to to uh, foreign climes. So this year we said no, we're going to definitely hold back a bit of production and we're going to put some, some of our own stuff onto a website. Also we're not seeing the tourist trade um, this year, there's no cruise liners into the islands which not only has hit ourselves but some people like Misa and John Pooley and them who really, many, many people, many, many people who rely on these. I mean, we had 90,000 passengers 
hit the islands last year, and we've had like ten this year. So you not not ten thousand. That's probably ten people. Um, so you can imagine what that's done to our stock in the shop. So it has allowed us the chance to um, to take some of that stock and put it online, um, and it's been it's been good. So you'll that, find that yeah, it's www.jamesonsknitwear.co.uk. So if you fancy having a look at some of the knitwear, please go online and have a look. Oh, somebody says they can't hear so well now um, <laughs> on Instagram. I hope that's just a glitch. Um, hopefully that's keep let us know if you can hear us okay on Instagram. So somebody is asking about um, the names of the spin drift colours. How do we come up with the names of the spin drift colours? Um, they've evolved. I think that would be a good way of putting it. Um, a lot of the names, some of the really kind of weird names, or they might sound weird to some of you guys, um, come from the natural colour of the sheep, for example. Murat is just the, the Shetland word for brown. Um, you know, the Murray Dancers, for example, 1400 Murray Dancers. That was a black colour that we made, and I jokingly said to my mum, that looks a bit like the Murray Dancers, the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis that we get to see here. Um, and she thought it was a good shout. Um, but, you know, we, we they just kind of evolve. I don't really know where all the names come from. But They're quite local. Some of them is local yeah. names, inspired by local things or local colours or words. Yeah. So just seems around as like yes and blue or yeah that's yeah um yeah just try to be shuttled inspired or then yeah yeah yes, of course. so all the can hear a bit better again somebody loves the names so i had a question um oh yeah the advent calendar so oh. are we going to do the advent calendar next year possibly it was kind of a off the cuff idea that was suggested to us this year and we kind of ran with it um, <laughs> and yeah we couldn't have foreseen how popular that was going to no. be or how it was going to crash the website on Saturday so once again we are so sorry if you were there and you had problems um, yeah we just couldn't have foreseen how many folk was going to want to buy a yarn advent calendar no. um, but we will somebody's asking are we going to release the patterns yeah we will but it'll be into next year we won't be releasing it before Christmas um, not to spoil anybody's advent calendar so it will be next year we're going to release the patterns yes Yes, that is the plan. So that you can buy them then. And somebody is asking if we're going to give away any hints as to what the pattern is. I think that was on Instagram. Um, no, we're not. We're going to leave it a surprise. No, <laughs> that's the whole point. I had a beer advent calendar a couple of years ago, and I tell you, it was a great surprise every day. I could highly <laughs> recommend it. Um, Lupa Knits, you want to share a picture to us. Um, how do you I do that? You can send know. us pictures normally through the Facebook page or the Instagram messaging service. I do try to answer mm -hmm. both. Um, or Louise tries to deal with Facebook maybe more than myself on more Instagram, but you can send it that way. I don't know if we've got, oh, God, well, I don't know if it's something you want us to see just now, but if you send it to us on either platform, we'll be able to get it. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's a good point. We're always really interested to see what people are doing with their yarns. It's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, it is. We really do like that aspect of Instagram has been able to see how everybody yeah. has been doing things and making things and the colours you've chosen and... Yeah, so please keep tagging us and hashtagging us. Yeah, it's we good. We do enjoy it's looking at it. It's good, and we do we do try our best to see everything. So Rachel, um, who was here last year at Will Week, I remember you, Rachel. Rachel is asking um, any people in, for how the US can buy wool fabric by the yardage. Is this the Rachel? Is this the tweet you're specifically asking about? I should imagine. Hope you're well. I hope I would imagine it probably is. Now our tweet, unfortunately, very sad. Um, our weaver Brian retired earlier this year just before lockdown. Um, I'll let him off, he was 76. Uh, <laughs> so, but it's been an extremely hard man yeah, to replay, replace, um, in fact, nigh on impossible. Anybody who's seen our setup will see that it's quite, um, quite an old setup that we have here. Um, and we really need someone who's got experience in running this, this type of Dornier looms. Um, so at the moment we have no uh, woven production, um, which is a shame really. Um, so yeah, tweed's on a... So it's on a hold. Elusive. Yeah, it's a bit elusive to us right now. We still have plenty of yarn, but no one to, uh, to weave it into cloth, unfortunately. So yeah, so for Rachel looking to get some... You just have to pack your back. suitcase, uh, pack, take an extra suitcase and come back and see us, I'm afraid. 
Okay, so again, somebody's asking us about we need to get our wool and our yarn into Australia. Um, calico and ivy, if I pronounce that right? Yes. Calico and ivy in Australia are a stockist. They um, are, yeah. They're potentially the only one in the whole of Australia, though. So it's quite a big continent for one <laughs> yeah. stockist. Um, but we, yeah, one of the big issues for getting stuff into Australia is the cost of shipping. Shipping stuff all the way from this tiny little island in the middle of the North Sea to literally the other side of the world. Um, does cost a bit, um, so it tends to push the yarn up as well, um, cost-wise, um, for the stockists. But we do, well, we'd be if you're a stockist in Australia, uh, please speak to us because we'd be very interested in. Uh, I in think talking. Calico and Ivy have got a website. They've certainly got a good Instagram yeah. page, so dig them out, have mm -hmm. a look at them, and see if they can help you. But we also yeah. ship to Australia. Yeah, we ship worldwide, everywhere. They're in Western Australia. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, we could maybe do with more stockists than Australia. Well, we definitely could do with more stockists. <laughs> <laughs> well, Calico and Ivy don't have any at the moment. Ah. Well, I know for a fact they shipped two boxes of yarn to them about a week ago, so they will have some soon. There you go. <laughs> okay, um, that's that, that one being answered. So I was writing down one here. So with regards to the patterns you sell, if we've got queries, should we ask you or should we tend to get in touch with the designer? I would get in touch with the designer. Um, yeah, it depends. Is this the Raga? Um, there's a few issues, I think, with the Raga in places. I think that's one that we are looking at on the pattern. Um, have a look for the designer. Yeah. If the designer does not exist on Ravelry or there's no way of getting a hold of them on Ravelry or indeed social media or whatever, then yeah, by all means, throw a question to us and we can put it to them or we might be able to answer it ourselves. But yeah, not I mean, personally. <laughs> I, I could find somebody who might be able to answer it for you, but uh, yeah. Okay, next question. Um, yeah, somebody in the US here is, uh, yeah, I've got that written down. Okay. Someone here in the US is asking about how do you order a yarn? Yeah, um, you've maybe just joined in late. There are, if there are stockist page on the website. Yeah, yeah. as I said before, um, check out our web page. There's a good stockist list on there for the US and Canada. Um, and we do try to keep that up to date as best we can. So please, um, please look there for, for your local um, somebody artist. says they can't find all the colours in the US anywhere. Um, Joan, are you still listening? <laughs> Joan, you, are you still there? Do you have all our colours in at Heritage Spinning and Weaving just now? You're up in Michigan. If you can drop, if you can answer back to me, I'll feed back again. Um, Ooh, oh, Molly yeah. has just come on and asked the same question. Molly, I already um, uh, did your uh, question the there. Questions. It was one of the first ones we covered. And... Um, I don't know if you just want to watch back to this later. We will have this on our on our website, um, on Facebook, sorry, website. But I think the, basically your answer is yes, that it does affect, so you're not seeing things, it does yeah. affect the thickness. It does, yeah. well, it, yeah, it's the it's the chemical process, unfortunately, that's going to change the, the feel of the yarn, as it were, even if it's the same weight. Yeah. Okay, okay, somebody here is asking about, on Instagram, is asking about ordering um, knitting yarn on cones. You can do that by phone, but any plans to add the cones to the website, at least for some colour shades? Not at the moment. Um, there are so many skews on our site already, it makes it very, very difficult to keep on top of, um, as you can well imagine. Um, all our yarn on cone is made to order as well, um, so the lead times might be a bit... Um, a bit unforgiving for people who, who are expecting um, things to just appear straight up so um, not at the moment but please by all means give the guys at the shop a shout they'll be more than happy to help sure okay going back to that pattern query it was about the hefter pattern it's difficult to tell the colours apart yeah we actually changed I think there's an that. For that I think there's an errata I think let me check on that because there was a change made to that, mm -hmm. so that's maybe not been uploaded yep. to Ravelry. It depends if it's a paper pattern or not. Yeah, a... we redid that chart, um, so please get in contact directly with the shop and they'll be more than happy to um, send you at the errata. Yeah, you can email the shop or phone them and ask them about that. I'm sure we, mm -hmm. I'm sure that was one that we did change for this exact reason. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a tricky one to, they're very similar. Um, so we changed them. Okay, I've got somebody over here on Instagram asking, would we be able to arrange some sort of feral knitting teaching lessons? I can't knit feral, but want to. Yay! Um, yeah, again, we probably we there's not anything we've spoken about doing ourselves. No, but there's, there's I would direct you back to Terry, Laura, again, Terry and Wilma do classes. Yeah, and um, Hazel, and there's, there's lots. Jeanette Budge. Yeah, there's lots of people. Get to um, Woolwick. You'll just have to come and visit us next year when it's all up and running. Um, there's loads of knitting classes on at that time and Fair Isle is obviously one of the big big pushes so uh, yeah 
Um, somebody, yeah, sorry, to finish your question there about feral teaching lessons. Yeah, if you go to the Shetland Blue Week page, you'll, there should be a list of designers and things on that page. Tutors, etc. Tutors and stuff. Um, so there's definitely stuff around. Um, St. Terry, because I know she's got ones online just now, um, but there are more. Mm-hmm. So um, This is a lady who's asked this question twice. Any tips on washing and blocking your wool? Um, hand wash, warm, look warm water and dry flat simple as that um, depends what you're maybe knitting sometimes they'll block things like hats over I've seen bowls of wool and balloons um, yeah depends what you're trying to do but that would be that's certainly how I would recommend doing it pin it out if you're doing a, a sweater obviously you want a jumper board which is the correct Shetland way to do it but um, you might not have a, a woolly horse as they're sometimes called um, so yeah it will depend on, on what you're wanting to do but just nice warm water um, somebody is saying on Facebook, I don't think we, one can watch back live is live and after that it's gone, isn't it? Not on Facebook. This actually will remain on Facebook. It'll be saved yeah. to our um, feed on Facebook, so you'll be able to come back and watch it yep. as many times as you want. Oh, great. Um, people on Instagram, <laughs> however, your uh, story is different. I think after it's gone on Instagram, it's gone. But you can find us on Facebook. It'll be sitting there on yeah. our feed. Mm-hmm. It's mitts that she's um, ah, washing. So you could get a set of mitt boards, just a piece yeah. of wood or something that's around about the right shape. Um, thick card even. Th- even thick card. Mm, well, it goes in wet, so you're better off with like um, wood or something. Um, but I think actually, again, Pepperwark, um, yeah, he, I, he has mitt boards. And, and have a look online. I'm sure there's loads of people that do that kind of thing. There are definitely some nice ones around. I've seen yeah, them on Instagram. Yeah, some really cool stuff. Yeah. Okay, so somebody else... Uh, I'm looking to knit an Aran sweater. I'd like soft wool, so should I opt for merino wool or simply stick with Aran? Thanks in advance. Not sure where you're going there. Merino is the type of sheep and Aran is a thickness. Um, so, uh, for example, our, our heather yarn knits as an Aran weight. Um, and merino wool, depends what feel you want. Obviously, I'm going to say don't knit with merino. You have to knit it with Shetland wool. Why? Why else would I not say that? But yeah, you want some lovely Shetland heather to knit that yeah, that sweater with. There's going back to that. Somebody's given us a tip for using card um, for blocking thick card with cling film wrapped around. That's uh, there you go. That's get a good wet. tip. Somebody's there you always go. got a good tip. We've always had wooden ones here for. Okay, any other questions? Keep them coming, we're running low. But Gary, you do tours all the time, and you've not done any on Wool Week, so. This no, year, usually I've not you're, seen anybody. Usually you're touring <laughs> three, four, five times a week this time of year. So, what other kind of questions do people ask when you're doing a tour, or what, what kind of things do people find most interesting? Even I always get asked how quickly you can put through a collar, and how long does it take to get a ball of wool, that kind of thing, and it's very, very hard to to guesstimate. I suppose would be the way way to put it, but I would have to do it on the economies of scale kind of thing. So, for example, when we wash wool for a day, we get out about a ton of wool in the wash. And then that'll take me, so let's say that that's taken 100 kilos of that, um, and I put that in a dye tank. That takes an hour and a bit to get it dye, and then I have to blend it. And that takes an hour and a half or so to blend that 100 kilos. Then you have to put it in the car machine. It'll take a day in the car machine, then it'll take a half a day to spin it. So you then have to twist the yarn. So then we have, you know, it'll take a couple of hours to twist up, say, a kilogram of that yarn. And then we have to wash that, well, hank it first, and then we wash it. That'll also take probably an hour or so. And then we have to recone it. That'll take, for a kilo, another maybe five, ten minutes, something like that. And then we can wind it into balls. So even if we wanted to try and push it through as fast as we possibly could, it would take at least a week to get that ball from the raw fleece all the way through to a clean ball of yarn. But obviously, we don't do it like that. We do it in economies of scale, so you get um, you get it through a lot faster. So instead of making one ball, I'd be making hundreds of the same color at the same time. So there you go. Okay, a few more questions coming in there. So, oh, somebody saying they love the color mails on Instagram. Thank you. No, <laughs> we're, that's, we're trying. That's, that's our job. That's <laughs> trying to promote good. lots of wool during wool week. Some of the colors, you said you wanted to try and get some of the colors that never see the light of day. 
And yeah, that's... when I'm doing Instagram stuff, I tend to sometimes pick things I like, and I'm very aware that people don't always like the same thing. So yeah, we're yeah. trying to get all the colours on Instagram this week during Will Week. Change it up a wee bit. So um, on Instagram, it says people are sending a request to be or to be in the live video. I'm not sure how this works, but I'm sure, sure. everybody's looking. So Gary, a few questions will come in there okay, right on cool. that. So um, <laughs> the first one that kind of made me laugh is I wrote it down. Gary, do you knit? <laughs> So I remember once at university, Gary did knit. I did. A I can knit. snail for us just for a fun. I can knit. We I, at school here in in Shetland, we learned to knit. It was part of our primary school education. It's fantastic for fine motor skills. That's why they taught it school kids. Um, but unfortunately, that got stopped a number of years ago. However, there is a fantastic um, program called the Piri Makers. Piri is small, makers being knitters um, in Shetland. Um, and you guys should really go and have a look at what they do. Um, so we've got like uh, tutors that go into school. Catherine, my wife, and my mom, they do the local school here, and, he, and Liz that works here as well. They go in at lunchtime and they, um, they teach the kids how to knit, and it's fantastic. So it's really in an aim to keep the tradition alive. Um, and yeah, it's also, also it's interesting. Well, you're a school teacher anyway, so it's maybe easier Sometimes. for you. So. Sometimes. Yeah, part time. So. Somebody said an autumn colour fill would be great. Well, the past two days has been two autumn shades of colour fill. So pop back for a look. We had an orangey brown theme yesterday and a yellowy brown theme today. Both had an autumn look to them. Okay, so somebody's saying that most yarn balls are sold in 50 gram balls. Why do we sell them in 25 gram balls? Fair Isle. Sometimes you need just a very, very small amount of yarn for say a decoration in the center of a fair isle garment. So if I sold you a whole 50 grams and you only needed maybe five, 10 grams of that, you're not gonna be a very happy camper. So that's why we do it in small, small balls. But that's why also when we do an iron and things like that, where it's generally speaking, you use a lot more of a single color. So our heather, for example, and the marl, those are sold in bigger quantities. That's why. There we go. Okay. Anything else? So yeah, a few things we just what to pick next. Okay, so somebody's asked here on Instagram. I can't see typing box. I just have the shade cards back in stock soon. Sorry, I'm just reading as it's come up live. Yeah, shade cards will be back in stock yeah, soon. Yeah, we've got we more on the way. More yeah. The way. So somebody else on Instagram has also asked, how long did it take you to learn how everything works? <laughs> so we've not even mentioned on this that this is actually a fifth generation business. So you've sort of grown up with this, your granddad and your yeah. dad and generations before you. So in the 80s when they started to build the factory there was nothing else here um, and uh, my dad built the factory and, and my grandfather at the same time. So all the machinery that arrived here um, arrived on trailers, a lot of it in nut and bolt um, situation, especially car machines. If anybody's ever seen a car machine they'll know that there's no way you could deadlift one of those in here. Um, so my father's got an amazing knowledge of the machinery, um, not only to put it together, but um, to fix it over all these years. Um, I probably started hanging around the factory here when I was like, what, 11, 12, something like that. Coming down here, playing in the factory with my dad. Um, and learning along the way, and then after I decided university was not for me, I was studying mechanical engineering, but I, I didn't finish. I came home to, to be in the factory because it was where I was uh, most happy, I suppose. Um, and over the last 15 years, I've just got to know stuff. Um, when I left school, um, before I went away, then one of our spinners had unfortunately just left at the same time. So I spent the whole summer carding and spinning. So that's how I learned to do that job. And when the baller machine first was installed, then we had no one to run it. So I ended up running it. And my father was the same with the with the Shimaseki knitting machines we have here. He came to realize if he had he had these machinery machines on site, he had to be able to a program them and b run them and fix them. Um, so he just spent that time learning, so he can still program and. So some all land on the job. Land, land on, to land on, on yeah. And unfortunately, and anybody who runs machinery will well know. There's the same things time and time again that go wrong. 
So you very, very quickly start to realise, oh, I know why that steam is bellowing out of that, because there's a hole, wherever it might be. So, yeah, unfortunately. Sometimes I can hear to a bit like Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> yeah, there's always, and there's always something breaking. Machinery always breaks. Um, if you use a machine, you inevitably will break it. Okay. Um, so else? Yeah, lots of real compliments about the colours and the yarn here and how hook, people are hooked at ferro knitting and hooked at knitting and stuff and it's great. Brilliant, it really is. fantastic. Um, again, some more praise for the colour wheels over on Instagram. Good, good. Um, and Misa saying she's missing the tours. There was a highlight for her... Um, yeah, for her, <laughs> her, her people that she's with, and yeah, Misa, yeah. we miss, we miss yeah, you all. Yeah, we, we miss and seeing everybody. Yes. This really is a poor wool week. Usually, we're having so much fun in the it's shop with everybody, and yeah, I'm definitely missing the hubbub this year. It's just not yeah, the same. It's usually see. mental. Us two in a room by ourselves. Where's the people? We, yeah. we miss you from yoga last year. We've had some. We've had a lot of laughs. So yeah, no, we. Yeah. You, we, hope. we always meet a few characters that stick in your head <laughs> and uh, you know who you are yeah. um, and we, we always really enjoy it it's, it's fantastic fun it is, it's such a shame not everybody's always in such a buzz and I think all the, all the tutors are, are in the same boat as us unfortunately so. and somebody, um, somebody is asking if we're going to do a virtual tour so you've maybe missed that information as well we have just released a video on yeah there's a video up all week um, this is the one that normally plays in our shops um, here in the islands um, so go on there and have a look and you'll see a much fresher faced version of me um, explaining the f process um, and it's up on Vimeo it's the, um, it's the platform it's on rather as YouTube uh, which might be sound a bit weird but that's where it's sitting um, and there's links on both our Instagram and our Facebook but you'll also find links directly from the uh, Shetland Wool Week pages yeah. as well so if you don't follow us you can go on through the Shetland Wool Week and find it there oh Nella mm -hmm. Nella is missing everybody and the buzz yeah yes totally Nella agrees. I'm absolutely it's on you with that flat. one yeah yeah so somebody here has mentioned your granddad Bertie he says blessed to have had Bertie give us a tour back in the day and he took time to show us his old car he had stashed on site <laughs> a great memory listen to all his stories about the shop Bertie was brilliant with stories yeah, his car's still here isn't it we actually have two of his cars are still here we after he died unfortunately we didn't really know what to do with these old cars because they were so much part of him um, he went all over he, he took that tiny little car all over Norway and you know there was a guy in an E-type Jag on the same trip that could hardly keep up with him going up these mountains he's just he just loved it so we kept them um, as, yeah. and they're still here in the factory we've got a small garage built inside the factory and they sit there warm and dry so it's actually yeah. really lovely reading everybody's comments and memories <laughs> like that that's brilliant to read thank yeah, you very much he was for a comic um, somebody asked what our least popular colours are I think it's all really personal choice isn't it there will be colours that are least yeah. popular though so I tend to see the ones that sit in least popular tends to be the model ones where we've taken two colours and we've plied them together. And one of the main reasons I think for that is because when you see them on the screen or on the shade card, they look terribly stripy. But when they're knitted, that stripiness disappears. And we actually use those natural marled ones a lot in our Fair Isle. So, so model's quite chunky, isn't it, guys? No, no, no. I mean the model colours so we're taking two colours of spin to make a spin we're taking a murat and a white, for example, and we mix them together. They look stripy. But when you knit them that stripiness disappears. So which colours are those then? That's your numbers one oh so one oh nine to one two one. Yeah, we're um, yeah, we're taking those things. So have a play. Don't be frightened of the stripe. Buy one and do something with it. Yeah, <laughs> have a go with them because we use them. So that's maybe our secret weapon in our fair isle. Maybe I shouldn't Should have told be. you that. Yeah, there you go. Secret, secret information <laughs> out there. So, okay, somebody else is asking... Eh? Oh, no, hang on. What have I got written down here? Nothing. Um, why, have I really written... Have we really answered everything? No, can't possibly have done. Must be something else. See, see Nila likes our marled spindle of colours. See, she... There you go. Can you show little swatches with the marled yarn? Curious about them. Yeah, I've said this before. I think people don't know what they look like or what to do with them. Maybe that's something I can take a photograph yeah. of and put onto the onto the website where you see the little picture of the colour. That's a good shout, actually. Yeah. I actually have that made, so... Because when we're selling our knitwear, then we sell them through swatched. Um, it's okay, I've got this guy. Things. Have you got all these? Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm writing, I'm going merrily with post it notes here. So somebody's asking here if other Shetland wool producers support each other, although we're in competition. 
Um, yeah. yeah, we do. Yeah, especially through the Wool Week um, initiative. Um, so, sorry, I maybe said that a bit quiet there. Somebody's asking, do Shetland wool producers support each other? Um, yes, I'd like to think we do. Um, especially all the knitwear companies, you know, and all the guys, the tutors and everything. The, the Shetland Wool Week, that's one of the things that's been fantastic for us. It's really kind of pulled the community together, as it were. Um, I mean, obviously, um, there's, there's, there's us and JNS that are, are producing yarns, um, and we always encourage people to, to use both yarn, um, and other people will do the same, I'm sure. But no, we do try our best to uh, to uh, support one another and answer questions, and and I mean also, I mean we obviously we we're in the business to sell yarn, and um, I'd be interested to sell it to anybody. So. Yeah. And also, we're trying to really promote um, local designers as well. So on our website, we've got patterns linked for from various local designers, mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. can find their work on our website. Just yeah, I really pick anybody that I think makes some nice stuff with their yarn, and we link it on our website. So there's loads of patterns on our website, most of which are linked back through Ravelry, that rather than be able to buy it yourself from our website, and yeah. that's to support the local designers and just kind of share, share and share alike. Yeah, that we all benefit off each other, and I think that's going quite well as well. Yeah, no, we've uh, that was one of the great bits of Ravelry is that we can just link that up to it. So it, um, it's a fantastic platform. Okay, somebody else is um, curious about what the advent box looked like. Well, Whoa. I'm sure on Instagram and Facebook after the 2nd of December or the 1st of December, if people start opening them, you will be able to see what they look like. Yeah, right now it's a big secret. We're keeping that a secret. So we're trying to keep the magic of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing else to keep magic this no, year. It's nice to have something. Somebody's asking, any effects around the climate changing? Any effects on climate change? The weather's changing. <laughs> the weather's definitely changing. Um, Anything to do with the business, I suppose. Does that mean? No. Um, uh, that's a very good question, really. I I don't. Obviously, we rely on a natural product, um, and we rely on sustainable farming. We rely on, um, you know, everybody looking after animals and looking after the environment that we live in. Um, Shetland obviously being a, a, an island it's kind of important to see it doesn't rise too far although it's nice and hilly um, you know it's yeah it's uh, I think it's something that's on everybody's shoulders to we try and do our best here obviously we we keep transport costs to a minimum and things like that because we do everything on on site but there's no way I could say that we were just a terribly um, climate um, What's the right way of putting that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't What's the right know. Way of I was busy buying things then. I wasn't yeah, going to answer um, yeah, The lady difficult, was difficult wondering one. if climate change has an effect on the fleeces. Ah. Well, not as much as farming techniques has. One of the biggest problems that we have is buying good Shetland fleece. So there's loads of fleeces in Shetland, but they're not all Shetland sheep. Um, and that's mainly down to the way that um, people are farming now. Um, unfortunately, wool is a byproduct of, of a farm now. Um, it's even uh, classified as such by our own government, which is terrible. It's disgusting, in fact, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but obviously, farmers are producing um, big lambs for the meat market, um, so that stops um, them from producing so much Shetland wool with Shetland um, sheep. But they do tend to use Shetland cross um, because they're fantastic maternal mothers and they're tough as old boots um, so they can survive here but we have an awful lot of open scattle here open grazing and these heavy English breeds Cheviots, Suffolks, Texels these are the ones that we see um, a lot in like, the south end of the islands for sure um, where it's lovely and lush and green but out on the open scattle these heavy English breeds die they can't survive it's too wet and cold and windy so they end up um, putting out little Shetland sheep out there to look after themselves. So, yeah, these are the people that we're still trying to buy are the majority of our club from. So, yeah. Okay, a few things come in just while I plug a bit on some that. So, oh, somebody okay. is asking again about the advent box. I'm sorry that was actually launched last week and it went on sale on Saturday and sold out within about an hour. Um, we won't be releasing any more this year. And somebody on Facebook's asked how we're going to follow that up. Well, we will release the patterns next year. 
Um, so those of you that missed out can buy the patterns and the yarn. And then the next fall will probably be an advent calendar next year if yeah, we I think so. want to take it on again. So it's been so popular. <laughs> Let's see how to well see. this one goes. Um, <laughs> Somebody here is asking if any tour companies are booking tours for 2021. Misa, if you're around, please have a look at Shetland Wool Adventures um, or get in touch with Andy. What's the name of Andy's company? Uh, Global Yell. Global Yell. Um, and ask them. I'm not sure if Misa's still watching. She might answer. I don't know if you're mm -hmm. taking tours for next year, Misa. But I know an awful lot of people are. have just moved everything on a year. Um, so stuff is probably going to be quite badly booked out. But never fear, you've got to try these things. If you don't ask, you don't get so. Yeah. Okay, somebody's on our website for the first time. Um, what is a knitting belt? Ooh, Hazel so Tyndall's YouTube channel. Have a look for a woman called Hazel Tyndall. She's the world's fastest knitter. <laughs> and she has got a fantastic video of her using a knitting belt. You use double pointed needles, big long double pointed needles. Um, and there's a whole massive traditional story about being able to walk and knit at the same time while carrying your pizza home. But that's for another day. Um, but yeah, go on and have a look at Hazel Tindall's site and have a look at Hazel's stuff altogether. Okay, Misa has just got back to us saying, yes, yeah, she's got very limited availability for next year. So please go on to Shetland Wool Adventures and get in touch with Misa and she'll help you out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, somebody asked if we deliver worldwide to South America. Yes, we do. We can do South America. Just not North America we and Canada. North America and Canada, unfortunately, due to our distribution agreement, um, we are locked in. To that at the moment so as I said before check our site for um, have we got here someone else asking yeah it's okay I've got I've yeah. got them all written down okay. I'm, I'm going to post it not mad here um, yeah so okay. I do have that one written down so we've been asked here and this is a question I am asked a fair bit is do we have any connection with Jimison and Smith JNS um, not now um, but the Jimison and Jimison and Smith was my great grand uncle, um, and he went into business with Jim Smith of Berry Farms. Gal, I um, hope I'm saying that right. Um, and at the time when my family decided to leave Lerwick and move back to Sanus, where we are today, then they went their separate ways. The two brothers that were um, the two Jimison brothers that were working together. So my great grandfather and my great grand uncle. Um, continue being wool brokers um, and that's where the Jimison and Jimison Smith comes from um, unfortunately he died in about 1966 or something and that was the last connection that we we really had with that um, company as such but obviously they're still they're still here they still buy an awful lot more wool than we buy I hasten to add they are the main um, wool broker um, in the islands um, and they ship wool all over the world um, through their their um, Parent company, uh, Curtis International, they're a huge uh, part of the wool market and board and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's our connection with those Once guys. Once upon a time. We Once upon a time, we were. The Jimison is, is actually my family, but uh, a long, long time ago. Somebody says, um, I swear I've seen your yarn in the US before. Yes, yeah, you will have seen our yarn in the US before. Yeah. We just can't ship direct. Yeah, we've got... Yeah, there's, yeah um, we through a company called Simply Shetland, we've been selling in the US for, oh, many, 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 many years. Too many for me to remember. Okay, somebody's asking if next year these advent calendars, or somebody next year, um, if we can order ahead and be able to collect at Shetland Wool Week. Um, yeah, possibly, I don't know, we've really not discussed next year not Wool Week that, no. or advent calendars, but I just I mean, Wool Week that happen. would be sensible, however, we're making no promises because nothing is yeah, kind right. of set in stone for next year. Let's see if we can get these ones all finished and out the door first. There is yarn in the US available. Oh yeah, somebody's replying to that person. Yeah, yeah we right do have a stockist page. Please yeah. keep spreading the word about our US stockists. Okay, Gary. Anything How are else? we doing? Somebody's asking who chooses the new colours. Um, necessity is the mother of all invention. I think that's the best answer to that. We put a colour on when we need one. That's really the truth thought. Um, and as I did say before, there's a few colours on that shade card that I'd like to take, and Heather eyes. Is that even a word? I don't know. Make them more interesting. Make them more interesting. That's what you mean by that, isn't it? For example, um, anybody with keen eyes would have seen that eggshell, 768 eggshell on our shade card changed about a year ago where I got fed up of trying to dye wool the correct colour and never got it this happy as I would like to have been. So I turned it into a heather shade because um, it's much, much easier to get it correct. <laughs> the nice the heather shades are nice. Somebody's yeah. asking what oh, it says. What's your favourite colour? I don't know if that's for us or general or who, but favourite colours, heather eyes. Heather eyes. <laughs> is that a word? Well, it is now. It I've is. just made it a word. Yeah, you can. Yeah. 
So, favorite color then? Do you have a favorite color, Gary? I like the Shetland colors. I like okay. the Shetland colors and the traditional ones. So you're looking at madder and gentian and um, like yellow ochre, the sort of the ones that would have been in the very, very old. If you go to the Shetland Museum and Archives and see some of the really old hand dyed with lichen and madder and indigo, natural, like dyes. natural dyes and the natural, the natural sheep's wool, because it's got such um, character. I think would be the way to put it. Yeah. 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 There you go. There we go. Do you have favourites? I don't know. It's quite a hard <laughs> question to ask, isn't it? Sometimes I, I, I do like the Nighthawks and the blues and the kind of the colours that I'm wearing. This is kind of the colours that I like. Atlantic, I think, is a nice colour. There's yeah. quite a lot of nice ultra colours that isn't in the sh um, Spindrift. I yeah. think there are some nice colours in there too. So, yeah, it depends on the day of the week. It depends on the project. Do you do wool that has a little sparkle? <laughs> this this word is morphing. We've not got heatherization here on Facebook. I love this. I've got that. I'm going to heatherization everything. Do we still have Shetland, Shetland Black? Black? Yes, absolutely. 101 Shetland Black. That is, uh, yeah, that's a natural, natural black colour um, that appears in the in the fleece naturally. Do we do a wool that has a little sparkle for Gary? We have no sparkle. A little sparkle? Do you mean like metallic y? Oh, I suppose glitter. Or, I don't really know. No, we don't add any. There's nothing, but, on that question, there's nothing but wool in our yeah, wool, if that makes sense. Madder was the yarn and Katie's kept. See, Wilma. See, there you go. That's one of Wilma's favourite colours, she said the yeah, other night. Yeah. So, there we go. So, we must be on the same wavelength. Okay, so, Gary, we've been speaking here for just shy of the hour now. Well, and there's another... still people watching. Okay. I'm not sure if still watching. <laughs> well, another, there's another... still people here. We'll go for another five or so minutes, um, and then we'll have to. Well, then I've got to go and pick up the girls from school. <laughs> and I've got to go to Lerwick and deliver some goods there. So, that's so, all you've got. Three okay. minutes to get your last question in. Metallic sparkle. Meta no, yeah. I don't add anything um, anything to the to the yarns. Just wool. I wouldn't want to try and clean it out of the machinery for a start off. Yeah. So. Again, if you've just joined us and not seen our video that's up this week, please go and have a look at it. Check it out. It's only available for the week. So <laughs> pop on, find it on Facebook, 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 indeed, Facebook and Instagram. We just made a new word there, Facebook. <laughs> uh, we're on making up words today. Do you know, it's also been great to see how far away some of you guys have been coming from. We've got Phoenix, Arizona just popped on to Instagram there. We've had Portugal. North Yorkshire. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, you've been all over saying hello from. We've had Japan in here. We've had South America, Australia. Ooh, that's a cool question. It's just this is from Molly again asking: with dyes that are specific dyes for each color, do you mix or do you mix specific dyes together? So I have a recipe. Um, a most, recipe book. most, most, yeah, I like a recipe. Book. It's a bit like baking a cake. Um, I know exactly how many grams of each color that I have to put together to create the same color every single time. And then it goes on to a, a weighed amount of wool, and then we boil that up till the color is almost gone out of the water. And then I take out a sample of yarn, of wool, or yarn as the case may be, check that against standard, um, and if it's good, then we can pull the plug and let that hot water go. Or indeed, um, boil off dye if it's too much or whatever. You can you can scour and fix, but a lot of the colours we've made for the last thirty odd years, that that recipe is down hat. We can there's certain ones like six, eight, nine, which is not a colour on our shade card, so everybody's going to go, ooh, I want that. Um, that one is a big component colour. Um, we'd probably dye that. Is that a secret Twice colour, Gary? Mm, yeah, it's kind of a purpley blue, I suppose. It's <laughs> so we have some secret colours that you don't yeah, know there exist. You go. So somebody's actually asked a great question over here on Facebook. Somebody said, an engineer, um, I've, I've lost it, he's actually been coming in thick and fast there in the last couple of minutes. So Chris from Devon is asking, what's the oldest bit of machinery you still use? I'm an engineer. Brilliant question. There's some really old bits of machinery yeah, around here. There is one of the squeeze heads in the scour tank is actually over 100 years old but it's got a gearbox attached to it that is probably 10 years old and a motor that's the same age um, so the big massive lump of cast iron which turns real slow and squashes the wool to squash out the old dirty water is very very old because you can imagine and being an engineer you'll know exactly what I mean it take an awful long time to wear out a massive lump of cast iron but the gearbox died 
and so did the motor. So, but we retrofitted a more modern solution to it. So, yeah, there you go again. Yeah. If you haven't seen the video, then I think you probably would be interested in it, Chris. Look at the video of the tour yep. of the factory because you'll probably enjoy watching all the machinery. There's quite a lot of people that enjoy the machinery. Sometimes I laugh and um, people that come to tours, the book, some. Not, not always, but sometimes the woman is very interested in the knitting and then the man's kind of coming on behind, but quite often, if this is stereotypical, I don't mean all, but some, <laughs> then the man's really quite interested in the machinery in the factory. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it rubs off and as, as an engineer and someone who does this for myself. I can go anywhere. I can go to distilleries or anywhere like that and it's always the machinery that fascinates me as well because I know exactly what it takes to keep stuff like that running, you know, because some of it is really old. So, it's, yeah, it's fun. The great thing about old machinery is it's fixable. <laughs> it's not a printed circuit board that went bang and that's the game over. Okay, so there's loads we'll tell us where they're from. We've got Scalwa, we've got Michigan, <laughs> we've got Italy, we've got Tennessee, Abby Germany, Moore. Abby Moore, go. <laughs> a shit on Durham Blair, Gowrie. Oh, there's so many. It's Texas. been great. Tech, yeah, Sweden, Fife. Loads of Sweden, in fact, actually. Plymouth, Michigan. Yeah, so it's been great having you all here with us. I hope what we've been talking about has been of interest. Um, yeah, and if you guys have any other questions, then please, by all means, just throw us a, a quick query. And we do try our best to get to everybody. And if we've missed anything, um, again, please give us a shout and we will do our level best to answer. There's loads of folk also on both. I've, I've lost the bottom of my questions here, but there's people on both feeds asking, um, no, just saying how brilliant this has been as part of Wool Week, since we've not been able to have Wool Week, yeah. having the virtual Wool Week um, has been, people and people are really enjoying I'm this so question and answer session. I'm so glad that everybody's enjoying this online version. This is not the Wool Week that any of us would have wanted to have happened, but I think that's big hats off to the team at Shetland Wool Week, at the Shetland Amenity Trust, um, who have managed to pull this together in what can only be described as the worst possible circumstances. Um, so your appreciation is um, is very much enjoyed and um, we're really, really happy that you're enjoying it. And uh, yeah, hopefully next year we'll get to see some of you here and uh, we won't have to sit and look at a computer screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, actually, it's been great that you've been sending in questions though. It's kept us going yeah. for an hour. Somebody's asked here... Um, saying what breed of sheep is it all Shetland breed so I think that's for the yarn that we produce and the stuff we produce yeah we buy we try to buy as much pure Shetland fleece as we possibly can um, and through careful grading we'll take out that crossbred um, stuff that does appear because most farmers will have a mixture um, of pure Shetlands and cross Shetlands and, and pure Cheviots and Suffolk and, and other things like that um, so we just through grading of that fleece we start to see that characteristics disappearing and reappearing so we um we have to to try and get that sorted yeah i'm just getting annoyed that i've got to go to lerwick now so right thank you very much everybody we're going to close down now i think yeah you're also going to say that if anybody's got a question that we've not answered or that you hadn't gotten put into us send us it via instagram or facebook and we'll respond or put it underneath the thread of this on facebook and we'll answer so everybody can see the question okay yeah. thank you very much guys yeah thank we'll you we'll see you all next year hopefully okay <laughs> bye okay oh there's Andul as well well done she enjoyed it thanks everybody I don't know how to end it though. There we go. Thanks. <laughs>